Brent with Emotiva Audio. And in today's video, I'm gonna show you how to configure the input settings for your XMC2 or RMC1 or L processor. So, we need to open up the menu and we're gonna to navigate to the setup portion of the menu in the left-hand column. We'll arrow to the right so that we can see all the different sections of the setup menu. And here, I already see that I'm on the inputs portion of the setup menu, which is where I want to go. Um, and we're gonna just take a look at a couple of different inputs. All the HDMI inputs will have mostly the same options. Any of the, the audio only inputs will, will basically all have the same options. So we're just gonna go into one of our HDMI inputs. And of course, when I arrow into HDMI one, I now have a, a whole variety of settings available that will apply to HDMI one input. Um, and I'm gonna kind of go through these, not necessarily in order that they're presented on the list, but more in the order of importance and, and things that are really key to getting your processor set up and running smoothly. Uh, one of the, the most important things you can do in your input settings is uh, assign uh, one of the buttons on the remote to any of your inputs. And by default, we see HDMI one is assigned to button input one. Um, and it typically, you know, for HDMI inputs, we would just, you know, leave them kind of default to, to their, their numbered buttons. But for example, if say, I want to very easily select my balanced input on the processor without having to scroll up and down through all the inputs, and I want to assign that to one of the numbered buttons one through seven on the remote, well, by default, uh, balanced in is assigned to button number seven, not HDMI seven, because that's one of our, our commonly used inputs. But let's say instead, I want to assign my balanced in to, uh, to button number three, because I only use a couple of uh, HDMI inputs, and, and so I'll use three for my balanced input, you know, my main music source. I can select any numbered button for any of my inputs on my processor. And I point this out first because it can become cumbersome to, you know, use the up and down arrows on the remote to scroll through all your inputs. It is much quicker to use the, the numbered buttons one through seven to directly select your inputs or at least your most commonly used inputs. Um, I'll show you another, uh, you know, trick for, for making input switching a little bit smoother. And that is the, uh, the visible box here. All that this does, if we move over and uncheck that box, is it would then remove the balanced input from the list of inputs that I see as I scroll using the up and down arrows on the remote to change inputs. And so, you know, if you're not using all of the optical inputs or all of the coax or even all the analog or HDMIs, you can simply hide those unused inputs by unmarking the visible box. And then that makes your scroll through all of your inputs that you do use uh, a little bit more smooth. So now I want to touch on one kind of common, not necessarily a mistake, but it just kind of overcomplicates input switching that folks will try to do regarding, you know, assigning buttons and using the direct, direct selection buttons. And here I, I've entered, uh, you know, HDMI input number four, and we can see that by default, you know, the first handful of HDMIs are just defaulted to, to HDMI one through six on the, on the buttons. Well, you know, HDMI four is assigned to button four. And let's say that instead of, you know, wanting to, uh, to use, uh, to assign button four to my analog input, sometimes folks will, will know that, you know, HDMI four goes with button number four, and instead, you know, we'll try to change the audio input to something like our, our analog input that we want to use when we press button four. The problem with assigning a different audio source, like say a, an analog source using RCA input to an HDMI just to make use of that button is that, well, now we may not actually have anything, a video source connected to HDMI 4. The processor in your display are gonna, gonna try to switch to that video on HDMI 4, even if you just plan to use the, the RCA input that we've kind of you know, assigned there. Really, the, the better way to do this so that we avoid telling the processor to you know, go to, uh, to HDMI 4 every time I wanna use my analog input um, would be to go back um, outside to my analog input and simply um, set the button for my analog input to button number four. That way, when I switch to my analog input, I'm not also switching the HDMI video stream to an open HDMI port. Uh, I can just assign the button number to number four so that when I select number four in the remote, 
the video is not switching, it's not switching to an open HDMI port just to use that button, we can instead assign the button to uh, our analog input there. Um, and so, you know, making unused inputs invisible, assigning buttons to the exact inputs you want to use as opposed to assigning an audio source to, to an HDMI input, um, it will really help streamline uh, your input switching, whether you use the buttons or you use the up and down arrows to move through your inputs. Um, and since we already talked about it, you know, we can kind of talk about assigning an audio source to another HDMI input. Um, and so if we go back, I'll go back to, you know, one of our HDMIs we haven't messed with yet. I will go to HDMI 2. And let's say on HDMI 2, I have a video source that is actually connected to HDMI 2, but I want to use a different audio source with that same video source. Maybe I'm using an optical connection for the audio, but HDMI for the video. In that type of case, you can assign a different audio input to a certain HDMI video stream. Notice we can't mix and match HDMI inputs. HDMI, you know, because of HDCP and the way the signals are, are you know, combined, we can't, you know, mix and match video and audio from different HDMIs, but I can select any of my other uh, audio only inputs to go along with my HDMI 2 uh, video input when I select it. This really should only be done if, for example, every time you use the video source on HDMI 2, you always want to use this other audio input for whatever reason. Very rarely anymore, I think, is, is this necessary. Um, you know, folks will often ask, well, how do I watch video then from HDMI input 2? Maybe I'm watching a, a game or something, but I don't really care to hear the commentators. I'd rather listen to music. Well, in that case, don't assign a permanent audio input differently on HDMI 2, all you need to do is, you know, get your HDMI playing with HDMI audio from your HDMI source, and then if you directly select an audio input, the video will remain the same and only the audio will switch over to whichever audio input you want to listen to over that video. And so, you know, assigning different audio inputs than uh, the standard HDMI to go along with your HDMI video input is very rarely a good idea. Most of the time you'd wanna, you know, just assign your input button directly to your audio input or just do the input switching away from HDMI to your audio so that you can listen to different audio over uh, your video source that you're wanting to watch. Um, and so just to cover uh, one of the other uh, big sections of this, uh, this input menu that I think is helpful um, we've, we've kind of talked about, you know, assigning buttons and, and streamlining input switching. Um, these couple of options here, 5.1 mode and 2.0 mode, these are useful, but I think there's some confusion sometimes about what they mean. This does not tell the processor that you're always playing in 5.1 or always 2.0 or, or telling the processor what to do with the channel count necessarily. This is saying, like for example, for 2.0 mode, when on this input I receive a 2.0 signal, be it uh, you know a PCM 2.0 for example, then this is the audio decoding mode that I want this input to use. So for example, you know, if when you receive a 2.0 signal, when I leave it in auto with an HDMI input, it's usually gonna up mix that to you know, all your surround channels, use the, the, the surround up mixer. Well, maybe for that particular HDMI input, you're using uh, you know, it only for music and you just want it to play in stereo. If I select 2.0 mode to be stereo for HDMI 2, any time that input receives a 2.0 signal of any format, the processor will automatically switch into stereo mode. Um, for the most part for HDMI, I, I tend to leave most of these on auto if I am wanting it to decode and surround. Uh, I find this more useful uh, for setting up, say, some of my, uh, my analog inputs. Uh, and so let's say that uh, I have, uh, you know, my system at home, uh, this is exactly how I have it set up. I'll kind of give this as an example. Um, I use the USB input for my external streamer. Uh, and so when I use my USB input, uh, there are a couple of things I want to automatically happen when I switch to my USB input. First, I want the USB input, which will receive a 2.0 signal from my streamer, I want to use reference stereo mode anytime I'm listening to music from my streamer. So I'm gonna tell the USB input, when you receive a 2.0 signal, play in stereo. 
I don't really care about the 5.1 mode because I'm not sending 5.1 to my USB, but if I was, you know, I could select it to be in direct mode so that I'm only getting the true 5.1, it's not being upmixed and, and so forth. Um, the other thing I like to kind of automatically set for some of my uh, for some of my inputs, so I guess I didn't hit reference to arrow. Here we go. We got for reference stereo. You got to arrow arrow to the right and tell it yes. I, I really do want reference stereo because you know that's a whole different uh, operating mode. You can read read more about. Um, but I also like to use a different speaker preset when I switch to my, my music only inputs. And so here, uh, say preset one I have set up for my surround, you know, with my front set to small, so they're directing bass to the subs. But when I listen to two channel from my USB input, I wanna use my second speaker preset, which I've set up with only fronts set to large, so I can listen in that just two channel reference stereo mode. This way, whenever I switch to my USB stream input, it automatically switches to preset two, which is my really two channel focused uh, speaker preset. And because I'm always sending it 2.0 signals, it's also gonna automatically switch into reference stereo. That way I can seamlessly switch between my HDMI inputs where the 2.0 and 5.1 and modes are set to auto just to, for general you know, surround up mixing for TV and movies um, and my HDMI's are also going to use speaker preset one, the default, and I can easily change all of those factors just by changing inputs by assigning special 2.0 modes and speaker presets. Um, we find that that the 5.1 mode is not often used. Uh, the direct mode is the mode I would suggest maybe trying there, which preserves the original channel count and doesn't you know upmix a native 5.1 to all your speakers. But in general, you know leaving that to auto is a good idea. 2.0 mode uh, we find is where, where folks you know use this a little more often maybe you because for 2.0 if you want to listen in stereo as opposed to surround you can tell it to do so here all right so one of the other very important features in particular in our hdmi input settings is this feature for hdmi type and this will apply anytime there is a mixture of 4K devices or HDMI 2.0, 2.0B, 2.1 devices even, and older 1080p only resolution devices from the HDMI 1.4 standard. So in, in theory, every HDMI standard should be backwards compatible. But whenever we have a mixture of HDMI devices, sometimes it can be helpful to explicitly tell uh, some of the devices that there's only a 1080 signal coming through and they don't need to, to uh, look for 4K signals or HDMI 2.0. And so on HDMI 1, let's say I'm using an older Blu-ray player that's only 1080p, or I have a cable or dish box that does not output 4K, that only outputs 1080p, or maybe my display I'm using that would apply to all my HDMI inputs is only a 1080p projector and doesn't support 4K input. It can be helpful for any of your 1080p only inputs, or um, if your display is 1080, so all your inputs will be outputting uh, 4K to change that to HDMI type 1.4. And when you make that change, uh, it, it will kind of reset your video. It may take a few seconds to make the change. It'll black out and kind of reset because you're telling the HDMI signal chain that you know there's a completely different HDMI standard on that input. So if you're having trouble with consistency with 1080 video sources or a 1080 display, uh, please try changing the HDMI type to 1.4. Of course, later on, if you then want to connect a 4K device to HDMI input one in this case, we would want to switch that back to HDMI 2.0 um, to then accommodate a 4K source on that input. If you change it to 1.4, it's not going to automatically go back to 2.0 when you connect a, a 4K device there. And finally, I think very self-explanatory is the name portion of the inputs menu. This is where you can, of course, change the name of any of your inputs. So, you know, you can name this Roku or Apple TV. It's a little cumbersome the first time, you know, getting through and, and scrolling through the letters uh, and assigning all of those. Um, but once you do it once, you don't have to do it every day. And, uh, and that'll, you know, kind of customize the names of your inputs and sources, which we, we all like to do around here and, and do it my system at home. Thanks for joining us today, and I hope this video helps you set up the input settings on your XMC2 or RMC1 or 1L processor. From all of us here at Emotiva Audio, happy listening.